Good morning and welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church. Happy Pentecost.
Amen. Uh, would you join me in saying, Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come again as cleansing fire. Burn away all that is false and fruitless. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come again as guiding fire. Light the way through our wilderness. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come again as refining fire purifying our words, our ways, and our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come again as prophetic fire. Rouse us to courage and action. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come again as unifying fire. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come again as empowering fire. Dance atop all your people, no matter where we are. Inspire your gifts. Send us to bless and change the world. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help us to live the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning and happy Pentecost. We're so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. Uh, today, uh, we will be in Acts chapter two, and so I invite you to get uh, the Bible that you have with you and to have Acts chapter 2 ready uh, for us to read. Uh, Christians all over the world this morning are reading Acts chapter 2, the story of Pentecost. Uh, as you are doing that, uh, I would encourage you to also uh, get a candle if you don't have a candle already. Uh, get a bunch of them. Uh, light your candles. Uh, we would love to see pictures of you and your household dressed in your Pentecost fire colors, flame colors. Uh, don't forget to uh, tag us uh, at Trinity UMC Sarasota. Uh, we would you know, love to have a whole bunch of pictures to post on the church Facebook page. Um, also, if you've done any decorating, uh, we'd love pictures of that. And again, be sure to tag us. Uh, we want to uh, let you know just a couple of things. Uh, we're still in the process of renovating our tech booth here at the church. And so uh, we're uh, coming to you uh, in just a little different way this morning. Um, thanks for your flexibility. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, one of the pieces of feedback we got was that it would be helpful to email the lyrics to the songs that we're singing and uh, some of the prayers that we're using. And so that email went out to our entire email list uh, on Saturday, so yesterday. Uh, if you did not receive it, that means you're not on our email list or it may be in your junk or spam folder. So uh, check uh, there. Uh, we are glad to add you to our email list. All you need to do is email trinity at itrinity.org, trinity at itrinity.org, and uh, we are glad to uh, get you uh, everything that we send out by email, uh, including uh, helps for Sunday worship. And so thank you. I, I wish I could remember who to thank for that great suggestion. It may have been George Cook. Um, and there, but there were so many people making great suggestions, we uh, wanted to let you know that. So uh, please go ahead and uh, let us know if you're not on the email list. 
Um, we also want to remind you that the uh, Summer in the Scriptures Gospel Reading Plan starts tomorrow. Uh, we will be posting uh, a link to that later today. Um, you can uh, join in reading through the Gospels, or you can um, continue with the Psalms reading plan, or you can do both, uh, whichever best suits your schedule. Um, there is actually a Facebook group forming for the Summer in the Scriptures reading plan, and uh, you can be a part of that as well and join with uh, other Christians from uh, all across our state. And uh, I suspect there'll be a few folks from out of state as well. So uh, that's available to you. Uh, we also wanted to remind you that we are live here on Facebook Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m. and at 7 p.m. Uh, please uh, use these times of live worship to interact with one another, to leave comments, to leave prayer requests, use the thumbs up and the smiley faces. Um, this, again, is the best that we can do for now in, uh, in gathering. And so uh, make it interactive and uh, greet one another and, uh, and be interactive with the songs and uh, the, the sermon time. Uh, your comments are always, always welcome. Again, uh, we are going to be in Acts chapter 2 this morning. Uh, before we get there, we're going to um, uh, read a couple of other scriptures uh, to kind of set the scene. Um, today, uh, you know, there's, there's probably a hundred different sermons that, that are being you know, could come from Acts chapter 2. What we're going to focus on today is this promise of spirit of truth, spirit of truth. And so where we encounter that is when Jesus promises the coming of the spirit back in John chapter 14 at the Last Supper. And so uh, Jesus says, uh, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Isn't that a great promise, to be with you forever? Uh, this is the spirit of truth. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And those were some uh, various passages from uh, John's rendition of the Last Supper. And so we get this image of uh, advocate, which uh, takes us into this idea of a courtroom. And so imagine a courtroom and the accuser, uh, the prosecutor, would be the evil one, the one who wants to condemn. Uh, the one who has uh, this voice of condemnation. Have you ever had that voice pop up in your head? Yep, me too. Uh, this voice of condemnation. And so, uh, also in the courtroom, standing alongside us, standing with us, is the advocate, is uh, our defender. And this defender is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. And um, this is this idea that the Holy Spirit speaks truth about who we are, speaks truth about who we can become, uh, speaks truth about the world around us, uh, opens our eyes to the truth. And, and it also says in that passage from John that the Holy Spirit will teach us and guide us in all truth. And so there's this active sense of the Holy Spirit at work and that that work is rooted in truth. Last week, we read Acts chapter 1, which was the story of the Ascension, uh, one of the Great Commission passages. And in that passage from Acts chapter 1, Jesus also gives us a promise about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are witnesses to the truth of God. We are witnesses to the good news 
that uh, Jesus Christ died and rose and will come again and that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord can be saved. We are witnesses to the goodness of God. We are witnesses so that we can spread goodwill and the common good, which is the truth of God's desire for all of humanity. And so this is who we are and this is what we get to do. We are empowered to do this by the presence of the Holy Spirit in us and through us. And so now we come to Acts chapter 2, 10 days later after Jesus' ascension, when the Holy Spirit comes with power. The Spirit of truth comes with power. And so Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Uh, You know, there... The Word of God is just living. It is, it is active. And depending on the circumstance that we're in, we read the Word of God differently. And so um, I, I am just caught by this line that says, they were all together in one place, right? Because uh, this Pentecost, we cannot be all together in one place. Uh, We are physically distanced from one another uh, due to the pandemic. This is our 12th week of online worship, and um, we just miss each other. We had a Zoom call this past week with the folks that are part of CareNet, and um, they are, uh, it was just so good. I hadn't seen some of them in about 12 weeks, and so... um, Uh, Also, we're not together. There is a deep divide in our nation on how we move forward uh, following this pandemic, Uh, during this pandemic, you know, masks or no masks, uh, how many can gather together, where they can gather. Um, And then, of course, we are not all together because of the political divide that we have in our nation right now. And we are not all together because the sin of racism just continues to divide us and destroy us. Um, and we, you know, we have this, this gap of experience uh, which is just bubbling over right now. And so we have some folks who feel safe and well-resourced and, and they don't understand Uh, that there is any kind of problem. And then we have some other folks that they experience injustice and discrimination regularly. Um, it, It is just a reality of their life and it is hard and it is exhausting. And, um, you know, there are folks that just don't feel safe. They, they don't feel safe in their neighborhoods. They don't feel safe in their own skin. We're beginning to realize this uh, reality of secondary PTSD, uh, that when uh, something happens to one person, folks who are like that person uh, have this emotional distress that they feel, which uh, keeps folks from uh, um, sleeping. Uh, It's PTSD. it manifests in all different ways. But, you know, just imagine living in this, this kind of zzz, this constant buzz of um, fear, right? And so instead of the Holy Spirit dancing on our heads, we have our cities on fire. And, um, you know, what will it take to get our attention? What will it take to bring change? And in 
you know, at the at Pentecost, it took this mighty rush of the Holy Spirit, this spirit of truth uh, coming onto the people and into the people and through the people, and it happened because they'd been praying for 10 days straight. And, and they just didn't receive it, they acted in it. It was prayer and action, prayer and action. You know, uh, Will Smith uh, said this past week, he said, racism isn't getting worse, it's getting filmed. And what's starting to happen with all of this filming is that we are beginning to see the truth. Um, and uh, we've got we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of listening to do, a lot of repenting to do, a lot of um, learning, a lot of learning. And so, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit brings truth. The Holy Spirit. Um, you know, awakens this truth in us, which leads to repentance, and that repentance leads to justice, and that justice leads to safety and belonging, and that safety and belonging leads to change. That's what the Holy Spirit does, the Spirit of Truth. Let's look some more. Uh, Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Um, you know, the the divided tongues were on top of the people, the divided tongues of fire. The people were not divided. This is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit brings people together, breaking down, dividing walls across race and culture and age and socioeconomic class, just all the dividing walls. Uh, Acts chapter two, verse five. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not these who are speaking Galileans, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Isn't it wonderful that the Holy Spirit speaks to us in our heart language? and uh, empowers us to do things that we never dreamed we can do. And then there's this long list of where folks were from. And it says, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. This is what brings us together. We focus on God's deeds of power in us and through us. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. You know, when we start speaking truth and living truth, folks are just going to think we're crazy. Yep. Yep. That's going to happen. Uh, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. He's going to speak some truth. Here it comes. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. What does a prophet do? A prophet speaks truth, right? Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, right? Breaking down age barriers. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. You know, breaking down socioeconomic and social labels. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Look at this line. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This gift of salvation, this gift of the Holy Spirit, this gift of truth, 
this gift of community coming together where the world says there should not be community. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. This is available to everyone. This is available to you. This is available to me. This is available to all the folks that are um, scared and hunkered down. This is available to all the folks that are protesting in the street. This is available to all of us. Come, Holy Spirit. One of my uh, pastor friends, uh, Candace Brooks, wrote this. She says, as one who thinks in images, I find myself asking what will be the visible symbol of our Pentecost this year. I like to imagine it, it will be an outstretched hand to praise and pray, to reconcile and bless, to give and to receive. A hand that we need not reject in fear, but clasp in faith, clasp in faith. This image tied in so beautifully with our deepest need uh, hand image. And it got me thinking, you know, we don't know our own worth until every single person knows their worth. We haven't fulfilled our purpose until all have the opportunity and resources to fulfill their purpose. We have not brought heaven on earth until all know understanding. Uh, we are not all safe until all of us are safe. Uh, we don't belong until all know that sense of belonging and we have not made the love of God real until all know the unconditional agape love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. This truth and this vision of what we can be holds us together. The spirit of truth. Come Holy Spirit, we are utterly dependent upon you. Come Holy Spirit, bring this about in us and through us. Come Holy Spirit, your truth is our hope. Come Holy Spirit, that the triumph of Jesus may be made real in and through each and every one of us. Come, Holy Spirit. How would you finish that sentence today? Come, Holy Spirit. How would you finish that sentence? Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring peace in hearts and minds and neighborhoods. Come, Holy Spirit, bring light and life. Come, Holy Spirit, our comforter. Comfort all who are suffering because of illness. Comfort all who are suffering because they are on the front lines of fighting this pandemic. Come, Holy Spirit. Uh, bring comfort on those who are experiencing injustice and depression. Come, Holy Spirit, bring opportunity, bring jobs to those who need it. Come, Holy Spirit, bring wisdom. You will teach us and you will guide us. You have said you will do this. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Grant wisdom to all who are in positions of authority. Grant them a desire for the common good. Grant them a spirit of collaboration. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Bring forth 
the fruit of the Spirit in us. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire your spiritual gifts in us. Come, Holy Spirit, call us out into new expressions that draw people together to the saving love of Jesus and the love of one another. God, we ask that you would raise up those calls, that you would raise up those fresh expressions of church. Come, Holy Spirit, and grant us wisdom. Make us alive in you. Come, Holy Spirit. Again, finish that sentence. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I invite you to open your hands. Take a breath in. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come, Holy Spirit. Let's continue to pray as we sing. Amen. Amen. Uh, Dear ones, beloved of God, go now in peace. Uh, Go to love. Go to serve. Go with the blessing and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen.